بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. I will talk about periodic continuous signals that are non-constant. I will show that these signals must have a fundamental period. Let's remind ourselves of what a periodic signal is. Consider a signal whose domain is R. The codomain can be R or it can be the set of complex numbers. Let's define set epsilon as the set of real numbers. So T here is in R. Such that the following functional equation is satisfied. For every small t in the set of real numbers, small x of t is equal to small x of t plus big T. Note that if we choose big T to be zero, then this will be trivially satisfied. In other words, the psi is non-empty and it always contains the number zero. If psi only contains the number zero, then our signal is not periodic. It is an aperiodic signal. A periodic signal is just a signal that is not aperiodic. So for periodic signals, the set epsi will contain more elements with the zero element. Again, set epsi always have the number zero because x of small t plus zero is equal to x of t for every t in R. If zero is the only element in epsi, our signal is not periodic. If there are other elements, then the signal is periodic. Set epsi may actually contain all real numbers. It can be the case that this is true for any real number big T. This is the case of constant signals which are special cases of a periodic signal. The question is, what other possibilities do we have? In this video, we are interested in signals that are continuous and that are periodic, but non-constant. So we want to think about the other possibilities for set epsi. Before we proceed, note that epsi is an additive subgroup of R. Epsi contains the identity element for addition, which is zero. We can check that if there is a real number big T in epsi, then minus T is in epsi. Let's check. What is x of t minus big T plus t? t minus big T is a real number. If big T is in this set, it means that x of something plus big T is equal to x of that thing, which is t minus big T. This means that x of t is equal to x of t minus big T for every small t in R. If big T is in this set, then minus big T is also in this set. If there are two real numbers, t1 and t2 in this set, then their sum is also in this set. We can check so. Take x of small t plus big T1 plus big T2. Now, because big T2 is in the set epsi, then x of something plus big T2 is x of this thing, which here is a small t plus big T1. But T1 is also in the set epsi. So x of t plus big T1 is x of t. So x of t plus T1 plus T2, this is x of t for every t in R. Then T1 plus T2 is also an element in the set epsi. We can generalize this conclusion and say that if t1 and t2 are elements of the set epsi, then any integer combination of t1 and t2 will also be in the set epsi. We want to focus on the non-trivial cases. We want epsi not to be the set of real numbers, but also to contain elements in addition to zero. I state a result here that will be useful for our purpose. Take alpha to be a positive real number, then take another real number, beta. Then we can write beta as an integer multiple of alpha, so n tilde is some integer, plus what you can described as a remainder, so plus r tilde, and r tilde is a number between 0 and alpha, and is strictly less than alpha. For example, if beta is here, midway between these two points, then beta is equal to 1 times alpha plus 1 half of alpha. If beta is here, midway between minus 3 alpha and minus 2 alpha, then beta is equal to the integer minus 3 times alpha plus 1 half of alpha, and so forth. To get the non-trivial cases of epsi, we will focus on this set. It's the set of the positive real numbers in epsi. Let's write here the definition of epsi. Epsi is the set of big T. Those are real numbers such that x of small t plus big T is equal to x of t for every t in R. This set here contains the positive real numbers in epsi. And we can ask this question. Does this set have a minimum? Suppose that the set has a minimum and this minimum is eta. Can we have this situation? Take any z in epsi. Eta is a positive number. Eta is the minimum of this set. Z is a real number. By our result here, we can write down Z as eta times an integer plus R, where R is greater than or equal to zero, but is strictly less than eta. We can use this expression to write down R as the integer one times Z plus the integer minus N times eta. Eta is an element in epsi. It's specifically the minimum of the positive elements of epsi. Z is a chosen element from epsi. Now what we have is an integer combination of them. One times Z plus minus N times eta, and this is R. We know that if two elements are in epsi, then any integer combination of them will be in the same set. Thus R is in the set epsi. But if R is in epsi, 
then its only possible value is zero because eta is the minimum of the positive elements of epsilon and r is strictly less than eta. If r is a positive number and it is less than eta, it will violate the definition of eta. So it must be the case that r is exactly equal to zero. And if r is equal to zero, this means that all the elements in the set epsilon can be expressed as integer multiples of this eta. This case gives us the periodic signals that have a fundamental period. It means that there is a smallest positive real number for which this functional equation is satisfied for those periodic signals. The next case to be investigated is when the set of positive elements in epsilon does not have a minimum, it has an infimum, and this infimum is strictly positive. So gamma is the infimum of those positive elements of epsilon, and gamma happens to be strictly positive. Here is the real line, here is zero, and here is gamma, and here is two gamma. Gamma is strictly positive. By the definition of an infimum, we are sure that there is an element in epsilon living between gamma and two gamma. Let's call this element T1. Also, we can find an element in epsilon between gamma and T1. Let's call this T2. Note that T1 minus T2 is strictly positive, just by construction. Note also that T1 minus T2 is an integer combination of two elements in epsilon. So this T1 minus T2 is an element of epsilon. But T1 minus T2 is strictly less than gamma, which is the infimum of all positive elements in epsilon. So T1 minus T2 is in epsilon and is less than gamma, which is the infimum of the positive elements of epsilon. That's a contradiction. This case cannot happen. The infimum of the positive elements of epsilon, in case the minimum does not exist, must be zero. This will be the last case that the minimum does not exist. There is an infimum, and the infimum is exactly equal to zero. Dick epsilon, that is strictly positive. By the definition, since the infimum is equal to zero, we can always find a positive u in epsilon, such that u is between zero and epsilon. Take any real number. Here, we do not need the real number to be in the set epsilon. Just take any general real number omega. U is strictly positive. We can write down omega as an integer, which here is L, times U plus C, which captures the difference between omega and LU. And C is strictly less than U. What is the distance between omega and LU? The magnitude of omega minus LU is C. And C is strictly less than U. And U is strictly less than epsilon. What is the idea here? Give me any positive epsilon, no matter how small, and a general real number omega. There is always a number in set epsilon. Why are we sure that this number is in set epsilon? Because u is in epsilon, and so any integer multiple of u is in epsilon. For any general real number omega, there is an element in epsilon such that the distance between omega and lu is less than epsilon. However small epsilon is, this means that epsilon is a dense set because you can find an element in epsilon that is arbitrarily close to any given real number. Epsilon can only be a set with one element, which is zero. Epsilon can be the set of real numbers. That's the case of periodic constant signals. Epsilon can contain the integer multiples of a positive number. That's the fundamental period. So eta here is the minimum of the positive elements in epsilon. Finally, epsilon can be a dense set in R. And an example of this is the set of rational numbers. Consider x of t, that is 1 if t is a rational number, and 0 if t is not a rational number. Is this function periodic? Let's see. If we take x of t plus a rational number, let's call it small q, x of t plus q, is this equal to x of t for every t in R? Suppose that t is a rational number, x of t is equal to 1. If t is a rational number, then t, which is rational, plus q, which is rational, is also a rational number, and x of t plus q is also equal to 1. If t is an irrational number, then x of t is equal to 0. t is irrational, an irrational number plus a rational number is irrational, and x of t plus q is equal to 0. This means that regardless of whether small t is rational or irrational, x of t plus q is equal to x of t. And this is true for every rational number q. This means that all non-zero rational numbers act as periods for x of t. What about the irrational numbers? Suppose that we take x of t plus 
let's pick an irrational number all. So this guy is a real number that is not rational. Now you can find that any irrational number cannot be a period for x of t. Any irrational number cannot be in the set epsi associated with the signal or the function x of t. Why is this? Just take x of 0. x of 0 is always equal to 1. But x of 0 plus an irrational number, this is equal to 0. This function here, this signal here, is periodic. All non-zero rational numbers are its periods. And any irrational number cannot be a period. This is our case here, in which set epsi associated with this x of t, this set epsi is not the set of real numbers, but it is a dense subset of the set of real numbers. Specifically, in our case here, epsi is the set of rational numbers. Let's now go back to the main question of this video. Signal or function x is periodic. This means that epsi can be r, but x is non-constant, so we can exclude this case. Now we have two remaining possibilities for a periodic signal x that is non-constant. Either it has a fundamental period or set epsi associated with x is a dense subset of r. x is a continuous function or signal. Let's assume that it does not have a fundamental period. We are only left with the possibility that set epsi is a dense subset of r. Big T in the set of real numbers. T is just a general real number. Set epsi is dense. There exists a sequence T1, T2, T3, and so on in epsi such that this sequence converges to this chosen T as n tends to infinity. We have a sequence Tn. Every element in that sequence is in set epsi. Every element in that sequence satisfies the functional equation that x of t plus big T sub n is equal to x of t for every t in R. The sequence Tn converges to t as n tends to infinity. x is a continuous function. Because of this, if this limit statement is true, then we also have that the sequence of x evaluated at t sub n, this sequence converges to x of t as n tends to infinity. Then what? Note that those Tn's are periods. This is true for every Tn. Put small t equal to zero. This means that x of Tn, because all those guys are periods for the signal or function x, then x of Tn is equal to x of zero for every n. In other words, this sequence here is a constant sequence. This sequence is x of zero, x of zero, x of zero, x of zero, and so forth. This sequence converges to a limit, and the limit is x of 0. Because big T sub n is a period of x, x of big T sub n is exactly equal to x of 0. And this is true for every positive integer n. This sequence is nothing but the fixed or constant sequence, which will converge to x of 0. But we have that it converges to x of t, where t is any arbitrary real number. By the uniqueness of limit in standard topology, these two must be the same. x of t is equal to x of 0. And this is true for every t in R. Then x is a constant function. But our assumption is that it is non-constant. Our assumption here that x does not have a fundamental period is false. It leads to a contradiction. The conclusion is that if we have a periodic signal that is non-constant and continuous, then it must have a fundamental period.